Welcome friends, in this video we're going to learn how to generate a database connected page that has all the basic features that allow you to, for example, to delete records, update records, and so on. All right, I'm here inside SSMS, and we are going to use this table. Remember, we made the employees table. We've got some basic fields here. And make sure that over here you've got the primary key set on the ID field. All right, so let me crank up a website project in Visual Studio. Here we are. I already have it because we've done this a couple times now. I'm already beginning from here to save time. So remember, all we have is a simple web page and we have a grid view control inside the page as we've done before. And that's it. Now we begin from here. Remember, I'm making an interactive web page where you can update, delete, and so on records. And we've got to confirm that the changes we make in the page are propagated down to the server. Okay. So I'll begin with the grid view and click the little arrow. The task and under grid view tasks select choose data source new data all right select database as we've done before click ok nothing new here we've done all of this before new connection all right let me just get the server all right so let me put that in there and again visual studio has this habit of showing one window through other windows for some reason sometimes now I'm going to say SQL Express. All right, down below, select the database. So I'll go here with my DBase. As we've done before, nothing new. Click OK. Same connection string. Click Next. All right, we've seen that. We've seen that. And here's where we configure what we want to be able to do, which is update records, delete records, and so on. So here, explicitly choose the ID, the name, the date started, salary, date modified. Select all of those fields individually by hand. And then click on Advanced. So that big button that says Advanced. And click on Generate Insert, Update, and Delete Statements. And now look through this very carefully. It says Generates Insert, Update, and Delete Statements based on your Select Statement. And look very carefully. It says you must have all primary key fields selected for this option to be enabled. That's an important observation. So make sure in your database table you have primary key. If you don't have that, you might get errors at this stage. Click OK. Click Next. Test the query one time. So as you can see, this is all just clicking. It's really easy. And then click Finish. And now we're back in the web page here. Let's enable some additional features. So sorting, yes. Editing, yes. Deleting, yes. Enable selection, yes. And let's give this one run, and then we'll make some additional changes to the appearance of it. That's kind of interesting. So hit Google Chrome, and let's see what happens here the first time. I move that over into the middle here. And here are the records. Very good. All right, let me just do this. I'm going to enlarge the view here, so make it nice and big. Take a look at the controls. All of this is available. They're right? super fast and easy. So first of all, imagine we want to modify one of the records. Can we do that right now? Yes. Click Edit. And it makes the first record here that represents John P. Smith, or John Smith. I was playing around earlier. That's why there's a P there. It makes it editable, so now you can enter new values as an example. Imagine in salary field, we enter 78,000 this time. And then I just hit Update. So hit Update on the left side. And now we have to confirm that this actually is propagated to the table. So remember this fact. I've updated John P. Smith's record, so his salary is 78000 Okay, let's take a look inside the table. I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to go back into SSMS. And now I'm going to just retrieve all the records from the employees table. I'm going to type select star from employees. And remember, for John P. Smith, this should be showing 78,000. Hit Execute, and it is showing 78,000. So this confirms that the change made in the page has been propagated down to here, to the table and server. Good. All right, next stage here. Maybe you saw for a brief second the dates were not neatly formatted. Take a look. So I'm going to run this one more time for a second. Right now, the appearance is not the best. Take a look at this date. It's got the date, then it's got the 12 a.m. Same thing with the date started. We want to change that, make it better. So I'm going to close this. 
Oh, and by the way, as you practice, you should try the delete options and the select options. I'll leave those to you as an exercise, okay? But you should try them. All right, so now click this little thing on the right side here and then choose where it says edit columns. All right. And never mind the one that says available fields. Just look down below where it says selected fields. So, for example, select uh, the date started field and then convert this into a template field. Do that next. This will allow us to take control of it at a very fine level. You'll see what I mean in a second. Same thing with the salary. Convert this into a template field. Same thing with the date modified. Convert it into a template field. That will allow you to take the control of those fields. So again, remember, I went here by doing grid view tasks and then edit columns. Now, you've done that. Scroll down towards edit templates. And now you can select the fields you want to modify further. So remember, date started. And you see where it says item template. And you see where it says label one inside it. Look where it says the arrow to the right, and then edit the data bindings. And as you can see, there's a lot of information here. Most of it speaks for itself. You've got field binding, bound to, so that simply tells it's bound to the date started field. The format. We are going to change the format. So click on that drop down, and you can change because this is a date, for example. I'm going to change this. So for example, it's a short date, like that. And short date means. 10 16 2017 All right, you can also have a long date which is Monday, October 16, 2017, you see? All right, but I'm going to keep it as the short date here. That's good enough. Then click okay. And then get out of this here. So click back at where my mouse is. And you can choose additional fields. So let's also do the salary item template so that it controls the display and maybe you want to pause now and try to finish it on your own so make it look like currency when it's displayed in a web page all right let's take a look here so click on a little label click on edit data bindings and then the name is salary and for the format, choose the one that says currency. And it gives you a nice visual preview. There's a dollar symbol, a period. And if you've got a big number, it's going to stick the commas in. It's going to take care of all of that. So it looks professional. Okay, click OK. And perhaps as a last exercise for you, you may want to format the other date field. I'm not going to do that because you know how. So maybe you take that step. All right. And lastly, make sure you click on grid view one. With a little arrow that points to the right, and then end template editing. End all of it. So on the bottom, remember, I clicked edit templates on the bottom of this context-sensitive menu. You modified, say, the date started and the salary fields. I left the date modified unchanged. So try that as an assignment for yourself. All right, let's give this a go over here one time. So hit Google Chrome. I just want to confirm that the formatting has taken place. So look very carefully. Now it looks different. You've got the salary formatted with a dollar symbol, so it looks good. You've got the date formatted as a short date. So again, you should try to do the date modified at least, okay? And make sure that the deletion is working. So I'll leave that to you. I'm going to close that. Give that a shot. And I want to take a look at the code a little bit that is generated. Remember that. We had a data source and we created an option that allowed us to basically select the fact that we want to update the records, delete the records, and so on. So click on source view. And when you first see this, I understand this can be overwhelming. There's so much of it here. Okay, but let's take a look at some of it a little bit, okay? So let's take a look at one of the fields as an example. Uh, say this one here. So you've got the text box, and it says ID equals text box 1. Now, where is that coming from? We didn't drag that in, did we? No, that's, that occurs when we did the editing of the templates. And notice something here that the text of that box is defined by getting this. You see where it says bind, and then date underscore started, 
That's where it's drawing its values from to be displayed in the page. See this bind is what we call a method or a, it's a function. The way we have functions in SQL Server that, for example, sum up some values, well, this is just a function that binds things together. So it binds the text box with the field, as you see here. All right. Take a look at the next one here, another bind, same principle applies. So now you're binding to the day you started, and this is label one. And over here, notice the difference. There's a zero colon D. That means you're formatting as a date. That's what it means. Okay? That's what this quantity right here means. That's a format specifier. We also saw that, if you think about it carefully, in the window where we did the template editing. That was present there. All right. And let's see what else. There you go. So that's the basic bind function. And again, you're binding, say, a text box to some underlying field. And that's it. Now, one thing that I should stress here is, see this edit item template? There is one. So this template is applied when you're editing the item. So when you click edit on the page and it makes the items editable, this is the template used here. So now look very carefully. The down below, it says item template. This is the one that is used to display it back once you have saved it. So make sure you understand there's a difference between the two. And if you think about it, how do we know? Well, one thing is called the edit item template, and the second one is called the item template. But more than that, this bind right here has just the salary, but the bind below it has the salary and the format specifier. Zero, zero colon C means format the appearance as currency. That's how we know. We can differentiate that way. All right, let me continue down here. And a lot of the other things here operate exactly the same way. So once I've explained, say, two of them, these items right here, like that, the rest operates pretty much the same way. And you can just repeat the same logic in terms of your thinking. All right, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Now, over here, we have commands. And I know this is all kind of smooshed together here. I'm going to separate things out just a little bit. You have to be really careful so that you don't omit any of the letters if something will go wrong. Select command. All right. Take a look with these. But first of all, we have the delete command. So this is what runs when we delete a record. And it says delete from name of table and then the where clause ID equals at ID. So this at ID is the parameter. That's it. All right, and that's how you identify which record is to be deleted. That is the basic delete command. The insert command, again, we have insert into, name of table. And now this one is a little bit different. So let me see whether I can break this over multiple lines and talk about it just a little bit for you. You have this list of columns right here. So it's date started, salary, date modified, name, those are columns. And then the values are followed as follows. We've got the date started parameter, the salary parameter, the date modified parameter, and the name parameter. And you need those because remember, through those, values are passed into the insert command in this case so that you can update your table. So that's why the parameters are needed. Down below, the select command right here. It just simply says select ID, date started as date started. And notice that here they're doing some aliasing, right? They're doing AS, AS. So they're doing some field aliasing with the select command here. And lastly, we've got the update command. Let's take a look at that for a second. So you've got the update, name of table, then you've got the set. And then after that, you've got date started. So that's one of the fields in the table, equals, and then at date underscore started so the name of the table field is right here and the name of the parameter that corresponds to it so that its value can be set is right following it after the operator that equals here all right the same thing with the salary we've got the name of the field assignment operator the equals and then you've got add salary that salary is the parameter 
rule which values are passed so they can be set inside the table. Same thing with the date modified, and same thing with the name as you see. And lastly, we have the where clause. So this controls which record is updated. All right, so if you look through this, even though it's in a context and it's uh, surrounded by a lot of different code, the underlying logic is the same as what we have coded in SQL Server, even if it looks a little bit different at first. And down below, we have a list of parameters. We have the delete parameters. So you've got the name of it, and then you have the data type. Okay, so the name is ID, the data type is integer32. Remember in SQL Server, it was called integer. So here there's a bit of data type mapping. The data types are a little bit different. Right, you've got the insert parameters, the next one there, see that? The date. All right, then you've got the next one here, salary. Then you've got the next one, date modified, and last you have the name. So again, remember that the DB type is date. The database type is date. The name is date underscore started. And then you repeat that for the other ones, you see? Like that. And lastly, at the bottom, we have the update parameters. So maybe you should pause the video and try to read through those on your own by now. And just make sure you understand that here everything is nicely harmonized and connected. But other than that, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much, friends, and I'll see you in the next one.